Guys. Where are we? This is Multiverse Monologues. I found him. I'm Batman. I am Iron Man. Bringing you news and discussions from all of your favorite film franchises. With great power comes great responsibility. With Ben Rayside and Ethan Wenslaw. We would be honored if you would join us. Now, it's time for Multiverse Monologues. He starts monologuing. He starts monologuing. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Multiverse Monologues. I'm Benjamin Rayside. I'm Ethan Wetzloff. And we are here talking. we got a new week, new week for listener feedback, and uh, I think we've got a pretty hefty amount, uh, as well as some feedback to the previous uh, video that just actually premiered on Monday, um, the $1 billion tier list video. Uh, we had some controversial comments and opinions on that one, and I said, please... Send us comments if you disagree, and we had I, I I had a great discussion with one of my buddies on the Joker, so I think we're going to be going over uh, that one uh, as well. But we got poll results for the Spider-Man tier list, which I'm very looking forward to to see how much uh, who pro what uh, holy catfish which projects won, um, and then uh, we got whatever feedback is on uh, the Instagram. Yeah, I'm just saying, me and you, we do have the power over the poll. And I think today we are going to have to exercise that power. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is not good. All right. So we're going to start with the DMs we've received this week. Perfect. So I did a separate questionnaire up on Instagram, but we're going to start with the DMs. First DM is from Micah Het, and he wants to know what our favorite non-canon Marvel movie is. Oh, so, what so is we're talking about like X-Men, Fantastic Four, the old Fantastic Four movies. Well, any of them, actually. Um, Spider-Man. As of right now, still Spider-Man, yeah. Amazing Spider-Man. So any, any Marvel movie that's not connected to the MCU timeline right, right. now. Okay. All right. What is the favorite of that? I mean, that would include even Blade, the old Punisher films. Oh. Ah, it's a cheap one, man. What what did you oh, want to I'm say? thinking Into the Spider-Verse. That it would I, have to be. Yeah, I'm shying away from that one. You can take I know. that one. I, I, no, I'm going to I'm going to say no to that one too because because it's I mean, I feel like that's the easiest thing to throw out there. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Any Spider-Man movie is really easy right now. I know. Just to throw out there. And you but, could say here, Spider-Man too. Yeah, I go ahead. think X-Men Days of Future Past, mm. or Days of Future Past, dude. Oh, wait, I have it. That one, Go ahead. That one's awesome. I love that one. I'm not going to talk too much about it, but what do you got, Ben? Logan. Yeah. Of, I totally I, forgot about I have not movie. seen Logan Oh, yet. my gosh. I'm going to do a rewatch, watch all the X-Men movies I have seen, and watch Logan at the end, because I have like a timeline order printed off. I'm going to watch them all, but I have not seen Logan yet, so I'm assuming that's going to be up there for me. Just don't. Try just don't try and follow the timeline because it, the X Men timeline is horrible. I mean, there's an order in which you watch them, but stuff really doesn't continue afterwards, and it's all wishy washy and muddled. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense. You got to take each movie. For I just days. know when I saw Days of Future Past, I wanted to have seen the original trilogy mm. because I watched the first two. I think. And the third one, major stuff happens, and it's referenced in Days of Future Past. Yeah. So I want to go back and re reset with The that. Last Stand. I did that a few years ago. Yeah, it's no, Logan. That is definitely my favorite one. It's modeled after your uh, old Western films, for sure. And there's even a black and white version So to reinforce that. But it's without a doubt Hugh Jackman's best film that he's ever been in. And it's a perfect character study for who Logan is, and it's a perfect send-off for... You could say one of the most influential comic book characters to ever grace the pages and screen. So, I mean, I won't talk too much about it. I haven't seen Logan in four years. Gosh, it's been too long. But um, Logan definitely is my favorite. I would even say over Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. I yeah. like that movie better than that. Logan is for sure. Sweet. Yeah. Good question, Micah. All right. So next question comes from John P underscore 19. 
And he asks, where do you think Daredevil will first appear in the MCU? That is a great question. We're going to spend a little bit of time on this one. Mm -hmm. Because I, legit, go ahead. And to clarify things, this morning it was announced, yeah. Kevin Feige said himself that Daredevil will be in the MCU. Mm -hmm. He didn't say when, but he said Charlie Cox will play Daredevil in the MCU. The official interview will be up and play right here. Uh, if you were to see Daredevil in upcoming things, uh, Charlie Cox, yes, would, would be the actor playing, uh, playing, playing Daredevil. Where we see that, how we see that, when we see that uh, remains to be seen. But basically what he says is, we don't know when, we don't know where he will show up, but Charlie Cox will be our Daredevil. Will he show up? So, Because the first thing, and we'll kind of talk about this later on, but my first thing, possibility, is that he may show up in some form or at least be referenced in Hawkeye. Yep, that's what I was thinking. I would thinking. not doubt if, if, King, if, if, if Kingpin truly is going to be in Hawkeye, which we're pretty much 90% sure at this point that he is going to be in it, I would I'm not be surprised. 100% sure. Right. I'm one, you yes. don't yes. put that, we'll talk about this later too, mm -hmm. but you don't put that tease with Uncle in Hawkeye and have it not be Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin. Yes. So because I, any yep. other actor playing that, say they recasted Kingpin, they would have showed his face. Mm -hmm. No, they, there's something special about this dude's face, and that's why they didn't show it. Absolutely. So I maybe a reference in Hawkeye. I really am thinking more and more that he's going to show up in No Way Home in some way or shape or form. I really don't know, but I, I would not be surprised if he was in that movie. Um, and then an, an appearance in Multiverse of Madness would, is not far from the table at all. And then Echo just recently, she got her own series. Wouldn't be surprised at all if he showed up in that one as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if he got his own show either. All of those are phenomenal possibilities to either a reference or a showing up to 100%. Yeah, I got to agree with you. Got nothing more to say on that. All right, now we're into a, our story replies for what you guys wanted to be asked this week. We have Justin Wentz 6, and he asks, how would you rank all the Spider-Man villains throughout all the movies? Whoa. <laughs> and let's, so for this one, let's just stick with the live action films. All right. Let's not venture into, into the Spider-Verse. Okay. Just to make it easier on us. Uh, how would I rank the villains? So, okay, well, least favorite, right? Okay, to favorite. Okay, my my least favorite villain. We're just gonna go with the one major villain from each film. So, first one goes Green Goblin. Second is this is your favorite, yeah? Well, no, 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 no. I'm just saying these are the villains we're going to. Write. Okay, yeah. Green Goblin, Doc Ock. We'll go with Sandman. Let's do Venom and Sandman. All right, Venom and Sandman, um, Lizard, Electro. We're not going to count Green Goblin because he's no, barely in no. it. Um, Vulture, Mysterio. That's who we'll do. And my, I think my least favorite is Venom from yep, Spider-Man 3. 100%. Yep. It, he's not in it as much. I don't like Toffer Grace's Eddie Brock. He's annoying and weird and just, ugh. Um, it, he just doesn't get enough screen time. And the story of the symbiote is underdeveloped again. So... I don't like Venom. He's my least favorite one. Um, I guess going from there, I would say um, the Lizard. Mm -hmm. He's not the greatest, and I just really don't empathize with him. His plan is stupid. Turn all of New York City into lizards. How generic of a villain and motivation is that? You know. And then I would have to say after that, Sandman. He's a good villain. I won't knock him there, but... He just doesn't get enough screen time. The problem with Spider-Man 3 is you have to juggle three villains. So characters are just shelved in that way. So that's where he belongs. And then I think Electro, they kind of flip-flop for me. But Electro's there just because he has a boss theme. And he has some really cool lines. Um, then we have Mysterio from Far From Home. And then Vulture from Homecoming. Green Goblin from Spider-Man 1, and then I think my favorite is Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2. Hmm. I think, okay. I think yeah. that's my, 
my, that's my ranking. All right. So I'll go, I'll go favorite to least favorite. Okay. Just be a little different. Favorite, Doc Ock, of course. Second favorite, it's got to be Green Goblin. Then mm -hmm. I'll go Vulture, Mysterio, Sandman. I think he mm. is so underrated. Christian Hayden Church plays him so well. And he doesn't get enough screen time. And that's, that's why I'm so, so pumped to see him again. Yeah. But I think he's criminally underrated. Then who do I got left? I'll go Electro. Mm, no. Lizard yeah. and Venom, I think, are it. Those are my... Then Electro, Lizard, Venom in that order. Yeah. So I think we have pretty similar lists, but... Right. Yep. Nothing too crazy. All right. Next question. We got Nikki Flash, 1998. Yo. He asked, how many times are you planning on watching No Way Home in that, theaters? Okay. <laughs> that's a great question. Let's start with um, <laughs> at least 10. No. <laughs> All right. Well, I saw Endgame eight times. So No Way Home, I don't think I'm going to see it that many times just because, number one, I don't have as much time as I did when I was a wee lad in high school, but oh, I would say probably three times. One, on opening night. Two, I'm going to see it relatively quickly after that, probably that weekend in IMAX. And then three, just as a capping off of just see it again, make sure all my thoughts are clear. And because number one is just going to be a wild ride you're in it just to see what happens you're, you know yeah yeah there's no really critical thinking that goes into it other than oh i'm just going to enjoy the ride i'm not going into it in a critical lens at all you know what's being given to me on the screen i'm just going to enjoy mm -hmm. it yeah and then the next i'm going to go in an imax and really immerse myself hmm. okay and then the final i'm just gonna take it all in yeah i think three is three is a number because obviously if it's Awesome. It's going to be more than three, probably. But three is the number because I'm going opening day. Mm -hmm. And then the 18th, this isn't for sure, but Micah Hett has IMAX tickets. Ooh. And he said if it, one of his family members doesn't want to go, that I'm his first choice to nice. go with him. So that's already two there. Nice. Then I'm sure after the hype has died down a couple weeks later, I'm going to see it at least one more time, you know, in an empty theater. So, Perfect. Yeah, three times for that one, minimum. All right, next question. We got Han.Wensloff. Which villain are you most hyped to see in No Way Home? So I said that Doc Ock is my most anticipated. Oh, well, my best villain. But I'm most hyped to see Green Goblin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, like, Doc Ock is the best villain out of them. But did you see the interview that they put out? Yes, the other one you sent he me. He was talking about. Yeah, me, Al me, Albert, and Will all sat down and watched that. Oh, dude, it was just beautiful to see him again, <laughs> all in the same scene. And to reference that interview, it does seem like Green Goblin will be the main antagonist yes. in this movie. And just, he, the way he talked about having not just the mustache twirling villain, like he said, in the, and to have a full story arc and a motivation that's fleshed out in this movie, because you can say arguably that he's the one who's been most scorned by spider-man so he was like really excited about the part he had to play in the movie so that that got me super hyped and i was like okay i really want to see the first villain again yeah and to reference that interview again it, so basically the interview we're talking about is they had william william defoe alfred Molina, and uh what's his face jamie fox yeah jamie Electro. fox they had those three up on a panel and they were doing it was a real quick nine minute interview mm -hmm. but those three talked about what it was like coming back to film and what i really liked about the interview is all three of them said yeah marvel came to us and they had a really good pitch mm -hmm. and that gets me so excited for this movie because if these three awesome actors were impressed by this pitch to come back reprise these iconic roles then I'm just so pumped. So Especially pumped. Willem Dafoe, because yeah, he's he's been in some good movies. Not to say that the other two haven't. I mean, Jamie Foxx was in Django Unchained, and that movie was, <laughs> holy cow. But, I mean, they've all been in really great movies. So the fact that they were impressed by this pitch tells me that 
we're in for not just a fan service movie. If we're in for a really great film, I, I'm so pumped. <laughs> and it's just, every day that gets closer, man. I'm just more and more excited. I, I saw something from Tom Holland, and he said they asked him if you could go back and film one scene from your trilogy of Spider-Man movies, what scene would you pick? And he goes, oh, well, I really can't talk about it because there's <laughs> one scene. Well, actually, no, there's two scenes. No, okay, okay. <laughs> there's three scenes in the new movie that I would do anything to film again. Dude, that, <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, what? I'm so pumped. I, the, dude. The, the, uh, dude. <laughs> I know. The days keep getting closer and we just keep getting more and more pumped to yep. see this movie. Without getting, sp I haven't seen any spo. I mean, be wary because the No Way Home soundtrack is leaked. I haven't seen anything. I haven't listened to anything, but the tracks, the track name list for those tracks have been known to be spoiler heavy. So just be wary. Yeah, of I, I saw that that was leaked, and I strayed away from that. Mm -hmm. right. But to answer your question, yes. It, so Green Goblin, hands down, is mm -hmm. what I'm most excited to see. Same here. But I'm also super excited to see Sandman again. I just I don't think he was done right in Spider-Man 3 and that's a contrary to Doc Ock. Doc Ock was done yes. awesome in Spider-Man 2. So I just really want to see Sandman again. Not that I'm not excited to see Doc Ock. I'm super excited to see Doc Ock, but I just want to see Sandman done right. Because we haven't really seen that yet. Bouncing off of that, same goes for Electro. Everything yeah. you just said, I want to see Electro done, and I think they're going to. And I well. think the main pitch to get Jamie Foxx back was, <laughs> he's not going to be blue. Right. And Jamie Foxx <laughs> ran to He's like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Which I think is awesome and completely hilarious how he was blue. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question from Sam Pilkington. Will Miles Morales be in No Way Home? I'll go first. Yeah. Yes. I think he will. Oh. I think it will he won't he might not even say a line, but I think he'll have a subtle appearance in this movie. In the background. Be oh. a sideline character. He won't he'll be in one scene off in the distance and the insane fans will notice him, but I don't think he'll hmm. he'll have a major role. I was watching a scene from Far From Home and it was an extended scene. It was in the bank scene when he when he when he's uh uh, helping the police. You remember that scene from Far From Home? Yeah. Yeah. And at the very end of the scene, he's like, I am going on vacation. And he leaves. And he was like, what about that selfie? And spider Man's like, next time. And he leaves. And I was like, and all the police officers look at that one guy. And he's like, what? And he's like, what? I, I got a nephew. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was cut from the film. I think it was actually in an extended scene. No, so I, I think, think I think the scene still... you're referencing is he says his name. He says Miles in no, that scene. I don't think he says he, it. I don't. No? Think, I just rewatched it today, and he's like, "I got a nephew." That's it. Well, because he says that in, no, in Homecoming. Well, that's a different guy. Is that's, it a different guy? That's Aaron. Well, Aaron Davis. Donald Glover plays him. Yes, Donald Glover plays. Oh no, I think Miles' his uncle. I forgot about that. Yeah. He says, my nephew. Oh, then I, I, I guess I'm thinking of something else. I think the senior, like there is a scrapped scene where, or I think even in that homecoming scene, Donald Glover says his miles by name, but it didn't make it in the movie. Hmm. So he's confirmed to be in the universe, you know? It's just, will we see him in this movie? Yeah. I'm going to say no. I don't think so. I Lame. think we've got – no, listen, you're <laughs> going to say yes, I'm going to say no, and I'm going to present why. Because, one, we've got a rumor of Daredevil appearing. We've got pretty much the confirmation of two of the old Spider-Men appearing. We've got five confirmed villains, and I think having him show up is just another th another – way to jerk your brain around you know it's like i mean maybe by reference i wouldn't doubt but i don't think we'll see him that's my, that's my that's i don't think so I just... all right all right last question we have from also from sam pilkington who is truly the most powerful avenger and i think she knows the answer we're gonna say no i listen man Dude, i know i think she knows the actual answer I'm I'm gonna just say it. Go Wanda. Ahead. It's gotta be Wanda. Yep. Right. The 
Good old boss himself has stated that fact. Wanda Maximoff practically destroyed Thanos in Endgame. If not for his ships firing down, Thanos would have died. Wanda definitely, without a doubt, is the most powerful hero. Doctor Strange may come close. Thor may come close. But Wanda, with her, the, her potential, we haven't seen it yet, but her potential for power is almost limitless, especially in the comics. She practically enslaved an entire city. She did enslave she an entire city. She did. She <laughs> right. brain controlled the entire city. Right. It's for sure Wanda Maximoff. And yeah. I think that's why she is, I don't want to say the villain, but the main antagonist for Multiverse of Madness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that's it for the questions. We want to dive into the... Oh, so, okay, right. The movie bracket. Well, I want to go, because last week we did... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Last week we did the $1 billion tier list. It premiered on... Um, Spotify two days ago. Yeah, we're on Spotify now for you guys that don't know. I was going to say that we forgot to do it in this one, but we'll do it in videos, the next ones. Um, but yes, we are on Spotify. Uh, every episode premiering from now on will be up there one day early, like earlier than it will be on YouTube. So you'll be able to find it there before on YouTube. So go listen to us on Spotify. I know it's easier. A lot. I know a lot more people use Spotify than YouTube. Oh, so, yeah. Yep. Um, we made the investment, and now we're on Spotify, and very happy to be a part of that. But that premiered on Sunday night, and today it premiered on YouTube, $1 billion tier list ranking, and we had some things to say about Joker. We did not like Joker, and I said, please talk to us if you like Joker or Last Jedi. Still have yet to get the Last Jedi <laughs> uh, sympathizers, but we did get a Joker sympathizer. Because there are very few... Well, yes, right. You can't really say it legitimately, but uh, my buddy Nick, he loves the Joker. Okay. And yeah. he goes, dude, I just listened to your tier list. You know how I feel about the Joker, right? And I was like, I think you like it. I'm pretty sure. And he's like, I love it. I thought it was amazing. And I was like, yeah, why do you think that? And he sent me a paper, but honestly, he said some really good things. So I just... For those of, I mean, for the most of you who like it out there, this is what he said. I'm sure he's speaking for a lot of you. He says it's a lot to explain. It's a lot of a story, but it really bogs down. It really boils down to the humanity of the Joker. It shows how one bad day can turn someone into a monster, which is something that is really heavily emphasized on the comics. I will grant you that. That's absolutely true. It also shows the Joker. He's almost careless in his view of violence. He doesn't see it as something out of the ordinary. I think the scene where he smashes the guy's head in the door and the midget can't reach the door makes the viewer feel like there isn't a line between comedy and horror, which is how the Joker views the world. I kind of compare it to the opening scene from The Dark Knight, where he puts the grenade in the banker's mouth, then drives away, but it turns out to just be a smoke bomb. It is almost faithful. It's mostly faithful to one of his uh, many comic origins. Uh, how he's a failed comedian and even draws from his appearance on a talk show on The Dark Knight Returns, animated um, movie and comics. And I think the ending is really emotional and dark, but that portrays his descent into madness really, really well. So, honestly, he texted me this whole thing, and it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty good, man. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's a good, I mean, he also said there's a few things he doesn't like. The interaction Which, with, every movie has a few things right. you don't like, but you know, you really did like this movie, Nick, and you gave a really great um, reason and explanation yeah, good on why you do like this movie. You're right; it is more comic accurate than I remembered it being. You know a lot more about DC than uh, anyone I know, but I, I still, I mean, I still can't be convinced to like it. It's how I left it feeling. And then we got to talk about violence and everything like that. And it was a really great conversation. But it was, a, I, I mean, I thought that was great, Nick. Yeah, no, 100% appreciate that and respect your opinion. Mm -hmm. And everything you said was valid, yeah. But it's just like, you can't make yourself like a movie. That's the thing. Like, you know, I would have loved to have come out of Joker loving it. Mm -hmm. But it just, it didn't, I didn't enjoy it. So, I mean, it's different for everybody. And yep. me and you were definitely in the minority of that. But, yeah, we, sure. one, thank you, Nick, for reaching out and mm -hmm. just letting us know what you thought because we appreciate that. And we know we're not – it's just our opinion. We're not right. 
Absolutely. Nothing about what we do makes us right. Mm -hmm. We just have our opinions and we like to talk about them. <laughs> and that's why we do this show. Uh, let's do the polls. This All week right. there was, what was it? The semifinals. Yeah, the semifinals. We have four movies remaining. And at the end of this, we will have two Whoa. remaining. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. All right. So the first matchup was Spider-Man, the OG, Tobey Maguire, Green Goblin. And then we have Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Where's your vote going, this Ben? This is going to be really interesting. My vote is going and has gone to Into the Spider-Verse, without a doubt. I've already explained on the last one why I love that movie. It's, without a doubt, the best Spider-Man movie of all time. I, yeah. I'll so say far. this. The Spider-Man, Spider-Man 1, deserves respect. It mm -hmm. kicked off the live-action universe of Spider-Man. Without a doubt. And it's just awesome to see. But Into the Spider-Verse is just such a good movie. And that's where my vote goes to. And you guys, the poll, you agree with us. 31% of you guys voted for Spider-Man. 69% of you guys voted Into the Spider-Verse. Nice. So with that, Into the Spider-Verse is a finalist. Perfect. That's right it where it should be. It is the one of two movies which will advance. All right, and that leads us right into our next one. We have Spider-Man 2 versus Spider-Man Far From Home. Whoa. Okay, so I think, okay, so I really, really like Far From Home. I think it's third on my list, but it doesn't hold a candle to Spider-Man 2 without, like, with. there's just no, as far as the Spider-Man movie goes, I mean, we've talked these movies to death. Every week, it always seems to come up in conversation. But Spider-Man 2 is, without a doubt, the best, one of the best live-action Spider-Man movies. Without a doubt, one of the best comic book movies of all time. One of the best villains. And it shows the true humanity of Peter Parker. I watched mm -hmm. a whole video essay mm -hmm. on it last, last week. And he, he did so well breaking who, it all down. Whose video essay was it? I forget who it was. It might have been The Closer Look yeah. on YouTube. I forget who it was. I'd have to look at it to give him credit. It, uh, it'll appear right there. But um, no, without a doubt, my vote my vote goes to Spider Man Two. I like Far From Home, but Spider Man Two is where my vote goes. Yeah, I love Tom Holland Spider Man. I absolutely love him. He's my favorite Spider Man. Agreed. I think he's such a great actor. He plays Peter Parker so well. He plays Spider Man great. But Spider Man Two is the best. Is it's so good. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the humanity of Peter Parker that is portrayed in this movie. Sacrifice after sacrifice he has to make in this movie. That is the whole movie. And there are a lot of people who don't like this movie because of how depressing it is. But, no dude, way. that is the struggle That's of Peter it's Parker. Good. That is why this movie hits so hard. Because there's even that scene when he hangs up the mantle. He decides... I don't want to be Spider-Man anymore. And he's happy, you know, for a little bit. But he knows with great power comes great responsibility. He knows he has to be Spider-Man, you know. Mm -hmm. And this movie's just great seeing his struggle with that. And not to mention, you have Doc Ock, Alfred Molina. So good. The, the CGI still holds up to mm -hmm. this day. And not even it's not even CGI. It's mostly practical yeah. effects, dude. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The they focus have... is on Peter Parker, not Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. That's why this movie does so well, because yes. you can relate to it. not a, like Because they're superheroes, but you can relate to it on a human side. He wants to go out with this girl. You know How relatable is that? You want to go out with someone you find genuinely fun and attractive, and it, mm -hmm. it's like everyone goes through that in life. But yet this guy has superpowers, and he's Spider-Man, and he's got to juggle those. I don't want to juggle this anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's going, I, I can't pay rent. I can't do any of that. I'm going to hang up the cape and, you know, yeah. I'm just going to be myself. And we get the great scene of him strolling around New York City, raindrops keep falling on my head. But it's so, dude, that movie is beautiful. Yeah. And just the thing that makes Spider-Man so compelling is his secret identity. Mm -hmm. And the MCU has shied away from... Spider-Man still has a secret identity, but basically every other superhero, well, you know, Not right in, now. His, in his first <laughs> right, movie, right, he does. Right. But uh, every other superhero in the MCU, they don't have a secret identity. 
But this movie, it's so heavy on that because his relationship with Mary Jane yes. is being destroyed. He just wants, I think they're just friends in this movie because he can't be with her. He knows it's too dangerous. At the end, they, I think at the end they get together. Yeah. Or she is marrying yeah, right. Jameson and run, runs away. On the, like, bro, <laughs> that's the one critique of this movie is just weakest love interest. Yeah, she's so weak. But the, the movie's so good, mm -hmm. you know. And this is where things get controversial because that's two votes right there. Mm -hmm. Movie advances. No way. But our Instagram what? poll. What? Our Instagram poll has said otherwise. What was the percentage? 46% voted for Spider-Man 2. And 54% of you guys voted for Far From Home. Holy catfish. That is a total. So total, we had 40 total votes. So that's basically a, that's as close as you can get to a 50-50 split. Holy cow. I can't believe that. I know. What? But I'm thinking because Spider-Man: Far From Home is fresh in people's memories. They know yeah, I that's guess a that's good true. movie. Not not everyone like us has rewatched these movies recently. Yep. Because you go anywhere else, Spider-Man Two wins this bracket. You know, mm -hmm. or this poll. But somehow our listeners pick Far From Home, and I don't know. What wow. do you want? What do you want to do about this? I mean, it's going home oh, no matter what. You know, but no. We're moving Spider-Man Two up. No, I'm I'm sorry. It's it's you, your boys here vetoed. Get, <laughs> right? No, I'm that's sorry. Why, that's why we got three votes. You know, yeah, that's if what one I'm of saying. us are uh, tripping, like like you wanted Amazing Spider-Man Two to advance, I vetoed that. So, <laughs> hey, listen, that's why we got three. So there's not a tie. Wow, that's crazy. I did not think that was going to happen. We're I'm, I can't wait to see who voted for. Uh, I mean, it's not even bad to vote for Spider-Man no, Far From no, Home. yeah. But it doesn't know the candle Spider-Man 2. So I guess that's it. That The final ranking or the final showdown this week will be between Into the Spider-Verse and Spider-Man 2. I'm sorry, audience, or the, the half of you that voted for in, uh, Far From Home, but that will not be moving on. So that is going to be the final. I'm really interested to see how that's going to go. I, I don't even know what I'm going to pick yet. Well, based on how little people voted for Spider-Man 2 this round, I guess into it feels like they're not going to have many people battling for them in the next round. But who knows? We'll have to wait till next week, see what see what we say, see what the polls say. You know, I don't know which one I'm going to pick, honestly. Because yeah. Across the Spider-Verse just had its trailer. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty hyped to see what's going on. So I, I don't know. <laughs> I, we'll, we'll have to see next week to see what's going to happen. But... Uh, no, I think that uh, I think that does it, man. Yeah. All right. Well, we thank you guys for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll be on Spotify again. Go up there. Give us a listen on there. So yeah, um, if you you guys want to know how to leave feedback, you can DM us on Instagram at Multiverse Monologues, and you can uh, find us on Twitter at Multiverse Talks. Mm. Oh, and dude. then nice. Do we have what's our G Gmail? Multiverse. Multiverse9321 at gmail.com. If you'd like to send us an email, there are much easier forms of communication, but please send yeah, we'll, us an email. We'll maybe check the email. Oh, I'll check the email. It's it's on my Gmail. I always, I, I have it ready up. So. I have it actually up right now too, so Oh nice. Let's see if we got any. No, I I think it's <laughs> I think it's just uh Oh yeah, it's just, just for me. me. Yeah, right. I think it's <laughs> I think that's it. So Thank you guys for watching. Um, whoa. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. But uh, this is Benjamin Rayside. This is Ethan Westloff. Signing off. We hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic day.